Next, we're going to take a look at Autodesk Job Server. Earlier, we restored a vault. We went in, we configured, we turned on Job Server. We enabled it. Uh, and then we had to go in and start the job processor. That is the client. That's actually the application that will make that DWF or synchronize the property. Let's talk about why we have that. So the challenge has been, well, how do we create a DWF or another visualization file by uh, a machine at check-in? And oftentimes on a very large assembly or a large data set, that takes some time. We have the job server that can offload that burden to another time or another machine entirely. We also have the ability to synchronize properties. So oftentimes we'll go in and, and uh, synchronize uh, and update the properties. We'll have Vault saying that the revision is uh, at a certain level and the file is saying something else. Through automation and, and through lifecycle transitions, we can automate this process and have the job server, job client, step in, do those things, do that dirty work for us, and put everything away inside a vault. At a large company, this allows them to scale up their number of users and declare a certain number of machines just as job user machines. So let's take a look at some use cases. As I mentioned, offloading the DWF creation is huge. The ability to put this into a job queue, think a print queue, and just let it spool up and it'll work with it, it'll chunk through it and get all of this data and it'll finish when it finishes. Generally, large companies will dedicate a workstation or workstations to do this and this will give, you know, give a, a, a better end user experience by creating the DWF and creating the information at another time as opposed to waiting for it to create it on check-in. So jobs can be triggered a number of ways. We can automate it. We can, on check-in, stop, say, well, let the, let the job server do it. We can actually do it at any time from within Vault. We can have this automated during a lifecycle state change, and we can even call it up from within Autoloader. At the end, as we're bulk loading data, we can say, well, let the job server take care of it. It'll, it'll get there when it gets there. The other thing that we can do is synchronize properties. So when we couple this together with the uh, the update of a property and the creation of a DWF. We couple that together to ensure that's what's in the vault matches what's on the print and the title block on the print. Some of the use cases, making sure that, for instance, if you had a property or something that changed as you moved a file to release, well, we'd want to make sure that on release certain things happen. We write back, first of all, we might change a property, change a, anything, like a lifecycle state, and we want that to then be reflected back onto the file. So during that lifecycle transition, we can say, go ahead, you know, write that back, it'll put it back into the file, and then bring this back up uh, and, and create the, uh, the DWF appropriately, thus ensuring if somebody goes into the web client or goes to browse for that file, the DWF that they see matches perfectly what's inside of the vault. It allows also users that do not have CAD, so there might be that non-CAD access type user, whether it's from the, uh, the full client or the thick client, or even from within the web client interface. We can optionally update the DWF and, and add that to the job queue, so it could be people that don't have a seat of CAD. If you have a dedicated machine on the network, It'll just take care of it for you.